Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Wow. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today, our journey is into a world that if you're less than 50 years old, you don't know. We are journeying into the world of traditional Hawaiian music, and my guest is Mihana Aloli Souza. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you for having me on. It's really nice to be here. It is a real pleasure. Mihana is, um, well, she grew up in the old tradition of Hawaiian music, when music was played all the time, in the family, in wherever you went, and um, be it a dressy party or family dinner or what have you. And Mihana was, as her name implies, was born into a musical family, mm -hmm. the great Ermgard Farden. <laughs> we'll get in the Farden. <laughs> Aluli. So, tell us about <clears throat> Mihana. Well, I am one of seven children. <clears throat> and from the time that I can remember, my mother gathered the children around and we sang with her. I remember one of my first memories is being in the kitchen and maybe two or three with my sister and she was teaching me how to be an alto with her music. My mother wrote music and her family played music from when they were little. And um, my brothers, and so we sang a lot. We sang in church and we mainly sang with my mother. It was a family thing. And my father was a lawyer, so they had many parties and always the children would come out and sing. <clears throat> and it was a lovely, lovely way to grow up because you're with all your cousins and they're singing and and you were surrounded by music in this beautiful place that people call paradise, and we get to call home. Well, now, your home was Maui. My mummy's home was Maui. She was one of 12 children born to the Farden family. My grandfather was Charles Farden, Keikua Farden. He was married to Annie Shaw, and he was the Luna or the manager of the Pioneer Mill. So they had 12 children, well, 13, but 12 who lived. And they were a musical family. My father, uh, my grandfather loved to sing. He sang in the choirs there, and all of the children grew up singing. So they were known as the Fabulous Fardens. <laughs> and they all had their parts. And I think that just carried on through all of our families. And they not only sang music, but they wrote music, they played music. I know all the children would come to school in Honolulu after the seventh grade, they'd be sent away. And they'd always come home, gather around the piano, and one played the saxophone and the violin and the piano and the guitar and the ukulele, and they would consequently play a lot of music. It was wonderful. So, but your home was, um in on Maui was yes. what is it Puamana Puamana was my mother's where my mother and her family were raised when they were young their father built a home on the seashore in Lahaina and in the front was a stone wall and on the stone wall was a name that said Puamana so in researching it he found out that Puamana was a chief a young chief and so he named the home after this chief, because that's what was on the wall. Pua meaning flower, mana meaning the spiritual strength. And my grandfather liked to think of their family as the flower. All the petals are the children. And the, the, that wonderful thing that comes up in the middle is, are the, the parents. Yes. Yeah. And so Pua Mana was born, and many, many wonderful memories are of that place growing up singing on moonlight nights they'd all gather in the front and they'd take their mats out and they'd sing you know that's of course there was no tv 
<laughs> and, uh, and their lives revolved around church choirs, and they would always have celebrations with the community, and the Farden family would always perform. And their sister, Emma, who was a hula dancer, she would choreograph these elaborate plays that they would put on. Well, when you have 12 children, you have the whole thing. Yeah, you, can, you had everybody. I mean, they would have the girls swinging, uh, beautiful, you know, with all the flowers. I mean, they had such fun. And that was carried on throughout our lives, too, because we get together with all of the aunts and uncles. Now, but you still play with your sisters. <gasps> so yes. tell us, <clears throat> now, um, my f first memories of you, this is the, the bass. Oh, yeah, the bass. <laughs> so how is it that you played the bass? Well, I was a young mother. I had two children, and I think I was about 32. And, you know, I remember thinking, well, you have to make some sort of money to help with the family. And so I used to do weddings and make headlays and decorate. And you know, it's really hard because you have to strap the daughter onto your body and go up and pick all of the lawa'e and go to floor out floors. And it got to the point where my friends didn't want to see me because they knew I would raid their yard for the flowers. And so after this really beautiful wedding that I did, and it was like, because it is something that dies, you have to do it last minute. So I hadn't slept for like two weeks. I went to my mother and I said, what do I have to do to play music? <laughs> because there's got to be a better way than this. <laughs> Although it's wonderful. My mother said, get a bass and we'll play music. So I called my cousin, Kekua Fernandez. He said, get up here. I have a bass for you. I took it home that night. My mother taught me how to play the bass in that evening. And I've never had a free weekend since. And that was maybe 42 years ago. Yes. <gasps> yes. So then. Um, like I said, my, my memories, of course, <laughs> bass. Or, or the bass. Oh. What, what is it about the bass, the stand-up bass, that is so prevalent in Hawaiian music? It is there in every piece of Hawaiian music. W what is that? Well, what is I that like sound? to think the bass is the belly of the music. It sets the tone. It does. Boom, boom, boom. It really adds the depth. I mean, I when we're playing music, you bring a bass in, and all of a sudden, it's, there's this, this resonance, this depth. And the bass is big. I mean, I used to feel like I was dancing with that bass. And it, was just, <laughs> it was just the best. And you'd move with the bass. I mean, yes. there's something really special and about that boom, bass. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and my mother taught me very, very simply, which I, in turn, have taught many people to the point where it's almost so it's like g is here boom 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 c is boom 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 d i mean it's just in 15 minutes i can teach you everything that i learned because the rest is feel i mean it's how you feel the movement and unfortunately i really should learn the bass the real way like how to but it's just so easy to move with the music and the bass it, with my mother's method which is simple, and you just set the rhythm, and you stay with the rhythm, and you give it, it's the belly. Yeah. That's what e my mother Even with uh, things like the Mary Monarch, and all of the music changes with each halal, but you can hear that oh, it is and there. Oh, they're wonderful bass players. And, and I look at them and oh, I really have to go learn, and I've tried to learn. <laughs> so. Maybe next next year. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, but that sets the tone. Now, tell us, we need to take a break, and uh, we'll hear just a little bit of your music. Oh, and I then when we come back, we'll talk some more about traditional Hawaiian music and where we are today in Hawaiian music. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music. There were a lot of people that claimed they had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of played some really nice sounds. Today, inspired musically, about life. They said I could play, so 
any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, that's how I do it. of your aloha. I'm Marsha and we're back with my lovely friend <laughs> Nihana Souza. Thank you. And as you know, we only do lovely friends. So <laughs> you know Hello. before we go down this road, tell us what your name, Nihana. It sounds Hawaiian, but it is you know, I not always Hawaiian. thought it was a Hawaiian name. And from the time I was little, Hawaiian women and aunties would come up and say, your name, something's wrong with your name. <laughs> it's sort of like you need something in the beginning and you need something in the end. And it's just something about your name, it's not, it's not right. And um, Auntie Napua finally called and she said, you know, your name is not correct and it's not right. So. You really have to be careful because you will take on whatever your name is. And she said, so I have to really finish it because these are the things that will happen to you with a name like that. And she proceeded to tell me my life. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, you would start things, but you can't finish it. You have great ideas, blah, blah, blah. Let me see there. Please. So finally, um, in my early 20s, she called and she said, come. Come into school and come and be with me as much as you can. And I'll pray that we can finish your name. So for several months, my mother and I would go to her Hawaiian classes. And one day, she, I mean, there was a wind that came through the room, it darkened, and she bellowed, your name is Ka'imi Hana no Eo, which means the one who searches for wisdom. Oh. She said, I saw it coming and I thought it was gonna be Ka'imi Hana. I thought you were gonna be the one who searches for knowledge. But she said, this is your name. She said, you're so lucky because you're beloved and your ancestors have given you this name. And you know, I walked out of there and I felt complete and I was so grateful. Because prior to that time, I think there was a lot of questioning. Oh, she's visiting us. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, I get a name complete. Then my auntie Peggy Kai calls me. She goes, you know, I've been researching the name. Your name is really Chinese. It's Mihan. You were one of five flowers from China, the five sisters who lived on the Big Island. I am Aoi, Alai, An, and Mihan. And it's a Chinese name, and it means beautiful, gracious, and refined. So I felt triply blessed because after all of that, my birth certificate comes to town, of which I didn't have one. And my first name is really Ermgard. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! But I like the me five John. I like the, the five John. Yes, me so hun. wonderful. So, so tell us so about I, there are, uh, so all the bases are covered. Yes. Now, we here we are in the 21st century in Hawaii, the heart chakra of the world. <gasps> and, oh, it really. Feels but lovely. we we don't hear traditional Hawaiian music. We don't see the loveliness of, tell us about the music of Hawaii, the old, the old traditional music. Well, I have to say that um, Puamana is very, very happy to carry on the tradition of traditional music. It's bass, guitar, and ukulele. Right. And it's three-part harmony. And we, we've been singing with our, we started maybe, as I say, 42 years ago. So we know all the old songs, and it's just really lovely. We're a family, and we're, trio of girls. Mm -hmm. I also have to share that I think we're in good hands because I have seen many young people sing 
and boy are they good. They know music, they read music, they play music, they speak Hawaiian. Yes. My mother came and she said, I am so amazed that they're speaking Hawaiian. She thought she would never see the language come back in her lifetime. She was not only stunned, but so happy that she saw Hawaiiana come back. She just didn't think that would come. So I really think that it's there because I see so many young people playing. It's just not in Waikiki. I mean, I, I don't go to Waikiki. Yeah. And I love Waikiki. Waikiki welcomes everybody. But my memory of Waikiki was we would always go down to have breakfast after church and we would always go for special occasions. And you could walk the promenade, you start at the Queen Surf and then walk down. Yes. I mean, it was the playground of the Pacific. I remember. Remember? Yes, I remember that at sunset, yep. you could walk down the beach and every hotel had a showroom and it was and, Hawaiian and, music and, and you could sit on the sand and watch. And people would come back year after year yeah. and they would know what their song was. I mean, I think, I think that it was a special time because there, there weren't the crowds. There were very specific right. people kinds came. Of people who yes, came, people came for the who, season, and who really nurtured the friendships with right. the people, mm -hmm. because that's where we all were swimming. Yeah. That's where we all went. All everybody surfed there, because that's where life happened. But now you have all the outskirts. I mean. It's very seldom that I'll leave Kailua to go to Waikiki. But it but used to be everybody went into Waikiki. There's not enough parking spaces. Oh, no. And you got to share with everybody. We are experiencing welcoming of other people into in Kailua. So I can oh, imagine. Kailua is, I mean, the oh. island is so beautiful that we're living in a global, a global economy and a global world where so many people are traveling. So the Hawaiians, where it used to be, I remember my father and all his friends, they would play tennis and they would, I mean, I felt like they were the princes of Hawaii because they were the young bulls when I was four and they were so handsome. But they all worked downtown and downtown was, there were a lot of Hawaiians down there. Well, there are lots of other wonderful people I feel that if you're here, you're Hawaiian. I mean, for some reason, I know so many people like you who are Hawaiian. They're just in a different color skin, but they have the spirit is totally there. But it's much, much bigger. And everybody wants, wants to come to paradise. And you've got to share it. This is a beautiful place. But I hope that the music, I did go to my, my family, I said, why don't we just go down and play on a street corner? <laughs> well, now that's an idea. I mean, to have just music on every street corner, I'd love to see Hawaiian musicians on every corner just playing music because that's a wonderful thing that we do. It is. So I said, why don't we just go there and play music? Just play music. <laughs> just, just show up. Yeah, just show up and play. That might be an idea, you know? <clears throat> Because yeah. I don't see any of that. And no, I, I don't either. And I'm, I wouldn't be afraid to do that. I would just really be happy to do that. Maybe sometime we'll do that. Okay. Just we'll, go down just and just go, play music. Just set up and let's just, <clears throat> let's just. Do and it. like vie for corners, you know? Yes. <laughs> and put I'd out your little. See that. You just drop the pennies in here. <laughs> I mean, that would be a lovely way. Now, tell us about this. I've been looking at your ukulele. I've never seen one oh, like this. I'm sorry. I carry this in my car all the time. It's a water mint, it's a waterproof ukulele. You can shower with it, sing in the shower, and it's waterproof. Let so I try. just went just swimming today, and um, I, I leave it in my car because it doesn't uh, suffer. Whereas if you have your Martins or yeah. your Kamakas, you have to be so careful. I know. This is $50, it has a, it has it a really great. good, it, it sounds good. It has a really great play, and I mean, it could be really hot, and you know this is living, and look, and it comes in every color. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I was gonna come here, and I, I have, so now I can have my ukulele everywhere, everywhere I go. you go. And you can get it at Coconut Grove, which and is a Kailua. It is lovely, I mean, and it's just, it's, it feels like a real, yes. Somebody said you should put sand in there, a few glass balls, water. 
have the beach, but it's wonderful. Okay. And as I say, my daughter will paddle out because she surfs, and then when she catches a wave, she'll play music coming in. Oh boy. Yeah. How many children do you have? I have five wonderful children, four boys and a girl. Oh boy. And they're all adults now. Yeah. yeah. One every five years. And do you know what? One every four years. Or four years. I thought it would get easier once they get older, but it's no, not. It doesn't. It gets more involved. <laughs> yes. And then they want they need bigger things. Yes. It used to be toys, books. Now it's houses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. But yeah. luckily now you I mean have, they were yeah. all away and now they're all home. Now but you have uh, sons that play music also. Do we they all play, play music? With you? Do they play with you? Um, you know, I think, and I might, it might be in my own head, but it seemed to me like the men had to get the real jobs and the women could sing because it was a secondary income. Mm -hmm. And I remember my father wasn't happy that we were singing. He didn't mind our singing for the family, but he didn't want us to sing for money. Oh. Um, and so the girls all played music, and the men had to go to work. They had to get real jobs, it's called. But now, all my boys play. Oh, good. And I meet with them, like I meet one son. I mean, every, we all have times that we practice. Mm -hmm. And I want that to happen so that when we're together, you can play music as a family. Well, we are just about out of time, however. Oh, darn. Th no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what I want everybody to hear, one of my favorite oh. songs that uh, your mother wrote, and it is for, for a peaceful. peaceful world. It is such a lovely song, and the other day I was driving I around uh, oh, at uh, Hanama Bay, yeah. and I opened all the car windows <gasps> and just, just vegetate in this song. It is absolutely marvelous. So, Ray, can we, you got it? Thank you so much. You know, oh, it's such it's a pleasure spending this time with you. Thank you, and thank you for the aloha that you share, that you are, that's, we can follow you. And so, you will come back. And, I'd love to. And we can I'm taking talk you to lunch. <laughs> and we'll talk some more yeah. and enjoy your music. Thank you. Uh, my This song is my mother's wish. And she would say, peace be with you. May you have peace in your family. Peace in this wonderful Aina. Peace in the United States and peace in our world. So God bless you and peace be with you. And, and every time you sing this, I feel like it's a blessing upon the land. It is. It is. And that's what we all for want. a peaceful world. Yeah. Listen to a voice and you'll hear a prayer. Listen to a sound and you'll hear a song. Listen to a heart and you'll find a soul. All this for peace. And it's the truth. It's just, that's where it is. And that's what we all want. And then that's what you are. Well, again, thank you so much for spending this time with you. Peace with us. With you. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha.